everyone, and welcome to Benny and Moose Save America, where every week we strike against toxic fandom and the failure of the American education system through the power of barroom trivia. I'm your host, Benny, and I'm joined, as always, by the man whose only fans page is registered as a lethal weapon, Mark the Moose Haas. Good morning, Benny. How the hell are you, my friend? I'm amazing, Moose. I'm day drinking at 9 a.m. It's all good. It is all good, my friend. That's the right attitude to have. I'm so excited for this show today. We're going to be covering Rocky, and we're bringing on three of what we think are the greatest Rocky competitors of all time. And this includes the entire Rocky franchise, creeds included. We're very Excellent. excited. We've got some old friends from the Schmodown. We've got a friend from the Movie Hero Network. It's going to be great. I'm very excited. And Moose, are we ready to introduce our competitors? You're damn right we are. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, if you're going to start a movie trivia league, there's only one man to start it with. Big goodness himself, J-T-E. Still on yeah. fire, baby. Look at that. That's right. I wear fan art made by Uncorporations. I don't buy official Rocky t-shirts. I only buy stuff made by fans. I think this I'm is worth sure the peril. I'm going to take the hit. They're still a company. <laughs> Pretty sure Stallone can afford that. Yeah, uh, he has his own Rocky Stallone line of clothing. I is, believe that. It, it is very expensive. Oh, so shit, I will not be it. buying anything from there right now. <laughs> now, JT, what is your favorite Rocky movie? You know, this is, you know, I mean, Christian Harloff would actually discuss this quite often because he, for a long time, would kind of jump between Rocky 2 and Rocky 3. And I understand exactly why he would pick either of those. But for me, I fell in love with the first film. I still think the first film is the best of all the films, honestly. I, it's just, it's at its most pure. There was no expectation. Stallone's character is, to me, is just one of the most, I think when I think about films, I think about films that, to me, the character, where I feel like by the end of the film, I really know that person. And I want to revisit that film because I want to spend time with that personality or that person in his story. And to me, Rocky is just the, the ultimate hang. If I get hang out with like any fictional character for like one day at a bar, it would probably be Rocky Balboa. Everyone loves the guy. He just brings the positivity to another level. He's funny. I think a lot of people forget how funny he is in that first film. There's a lot of real comedic moments where he's playing this Italian kind of dumb guy, the press conference where he's like, you know what that means? If he can't fight, he sure can't make good, like plate of spaghetti or something. And <laughs> Stallone like gets into argument at the press conference. He's like, Hey man, don't touch me. And, and I just love the um, unfiltered Rocky Balboa, Philadelphia boy in that movie, because he's not there for the TVs. He's not there for the press. Like even when the news reporter interviews him, when he's doing the meet, you know, he's just, he's just himself, no matter what the situation. And that's what I love about him. When he beats that guy up at the dock, it is pretty hilarious. <laughs> oh, my God. So, but he doesn't. He's supposed to break his finger or something, and he's like, he won't do it because he's too good of a guy. And that's – you can't – you can tell he's faking. He's putting a front on. That's what I love about it. And ladies and gentlemen, introducing his first competitor, the man so sweet that his nickname is literally just compressed sugar, Austin Pez Howell. What's going on, guys? Welcome to Benny and Moose, Save America, Austin. Uh, yes. Same question is going to come to you. Now, what is your favorite Rocky movie? Uh, it could change on any given day, but I think if I had to settle right now, uh, it's Rocky Three. Rocky Three is just the one I've seen the most. Uh, it does have a wrestling connection. I've been in the pro wrestling business for 16 years, so the fact that we have you know Hulk Hogan in there uh, having a wrestling match with, with Rocky is pretty great. Um, and, yeah, I just love the the – relationship between Rocky and Apollo in that movie. I think it's a really cool dynamic and the fact that he trains him and it just, it just makes for a really, really entertaining movie. You got a great villain and uh, it's just the one I probably sat down and just watched the most times out of all of them. Although the Rocky four director's cut is catching up on that. I really love that. Oh, well, quick, quick question here. Are, yes. If you're a wrestling fan, have you seen paradise alley? <laughs> not in a long time i've seen it once <laughs> it's literally a wrestling movie with stallone i, I, mean, I know but it's not a great <laughs> wrestling movie <laughs> it's, it's, it's got terry funk in there man there's only been one really great wrestling movie that's the wrestler but like all the other wrestling movies they have wrestling in them they're watchable but they're not really yeah. great <laughs> so yeah understood 
Mm -hmm. And the man closing out this terrifying threesome, the ultimate survivor himself, David DJ Jindoyan. What's up, gentlemen? Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for being on board. DJ, question goes to you to wrap us up. What is your favorite Rocky? Well, uh, kind of just like JT said, I mean, for me, it's hands down, and you can see it for, yep, right there. Um, Rocky won. It's... For me, it's not even just about the boxing. It's one of the greatest love story movies that's ever been made, in my opinion. Um, like the relationship between him and Adrian in my book is done so per like pitch perfect. And everything about it is heartfelt, genuine, pure, nice, kind, sweet, all of it. And Rocky just comes from this place of care, even though, like you said, like the guy is going to go on the docks, he's a leg breaker for some you know, Lone Shark, and he's just this deep down, sweet, genuine guy. He's always just himself, and all he wants is Adrian and has that love. And boxing, to me, is kind of like the secondary part, which just adds to that flavor. So it's it's kind of like that complete package. It's got, you know, the the love, the action, the, the drama, all of it, the underdog story. So it's it just encompasses all that, and I just feel like I relate to that a lot. So. Can I add to DJ's comment real quick? I'm going to interrupt a lot in this show because this is Rocky. Uh, <laughs> to his point, what I love is in that last, very last moments of that film, after the fight is over, yep. Rocky doesn't even want to hear what the result is. All he cares is about Adrian. Adrian runs to the ring, her, and in the process, she loses her hat. Yeah. And the first thing Rocky says to her when he sees her in the ring, he's like, where's your hat? Like that's the first thing because all he does is care about her, and to me that's like such a great moment in the movie that you could easily just kind of forget because everything's happening and it comes to this you know huge moment at the end where it freeze frames. But I think that yeah. little moment where he's like, "Where's your hat?" says so much about their the relationship. Yeah. Usually, the end of the fight is like the big climax of the yeah. film, right? Like you want to hear what the result is and all that. That you yeah. barely hear who wins the fight. Yeah, where's your hat is the first thing he says to her when she runs hat, yeah. all the way down there. It's so good. Well, hopefully that's not one of the questions that we wrote for you guys. We <laughs> answered already out there in the ether. <laughs> Are you guys ready to play a little Keeping you on your toes. Now? I'm keeping yeah. you on your toes, yeah. <laughs> Making them rewrite on the fly. <laughs> All right, Moose, do you want to hit them with the round one rules before we step into the field of combat? Absolutely. Round number one. You will get nine questions, each worth one point. Each team or player receives all nine questions posed to the field, so a whiteboard or writing instrument is required. Each question is worth one point. There is no stealing. There is no penalty for missing the questions. You can enact the household rule once you hear the category. You can double down. And you also have your bartender's hints available in round one. Okay. All right. So we're going to start round one, guys. Boards up. Pens ready. Fire away, Benny. All right. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, your first question in the category of Rocky. Mark Lee Green was the original fighter Apollo was supposed to fight in Rocky one. After he is taken out due to an injury, Apollo wants a hook or a novelty for the fight. What novelty or hook is the reason that he chooses Rocky? There's a couple ways I could answer this, so I'm going to just yeah. put all of them. By the way, it's Mac Lee Green, not Mark Yeah, Lee I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> That's why you guys are playing in this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll count you guys uh, down. Four, three, three, two, and one. Let's start with JTE. All right. So 
I gotta explain a little. So he's Italian, and it's the you know they're celebrating basically the fact that Italian founded you know America, and he's like, what better than to fight one of the ancestors? And then it was because the name Rocky Balboa. He's like, it sounds like a damn monster movie, Apollo Creed versus Rocky Balboa, boom. And and because it's un and because he was unknown, and he and his whole thing was we could use the whole angle of I'm giving an unknown a shot, somebody who you know helped found this country, blah blah blah. We were just <laughs> looking for Italian, but we'll take them all. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Point on the board for JT. Uh, DJ, how about you? Uh, yeah, I said it was just his name recognition. The, the Italian stallion, as he says. Yep. We'll take it. Sure. I said what, what Moose said. Rocky is Italian. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> One has come up with the actual Rocky. answer they were looking for. Yes. <laughs> That's right. You guys nailed it. Uh, question number two. In Rocky Three, during the rematch with Clever Lang, Apollo said that Rocky was getting killed in the ring. Polly responds that he's not getting killed. He's what? I almost got confused with Rocky Four. I was always kind of disappointed Mr. T didn't fight this fight with the feathers still in his ear. I thought that would have been sort of a really much. <laughs> Absolutely, it would have. Uh, looks like, like you guys all. In the middle of the match, though. Hold on. <laughs> was an earring, right? <laughs> yeah. It's a hell of an earring. I, I don't. God, I can't remember. Okay, I have like three we'll different answers. <laughs> uh, five, four, three, two, one, and David. What did you get, my friend? I said he's getting mad. He is getting mad. That's correct. Pez. Getting mad with an N yeah. at the end. That's mad. right. <laughs> getting mad. I, I just I wrote I wrote murdered. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I originally wrote angry. <laughs> but we would have given you angry. Angry, angry would have worked. And I, I double guess I was trying to think of Rocky three and four because I'm like, he he ain't getting he's getting mad. I yeah, I could almost hear him say it, but I can't picture what movie it was. <laughs> All right. well, and, your, and your third question in the category of Rocky, the line, yo, Adrian, I did it, is considered one of the most iconic lines in all of sports films. In what movie is that line first uttered? Jeez, these guys have these answers written before we're even done asking the question. <laughs> this is scary, Benny. This is yeah, scary. I'm listening to the whole question. <laughs> I have, yeah, I, did, I, I, have I have a guess I just... that these guys enjoy the Rocky franchise. Mm -hmm. Very much so. You can thank TNT for that. Absolutely. One. <laughs> TNT Sunday afternoons. <laughs> and JT. Uh, Rocky 2. That is correct. Pez Howell. Rocky 2. That's correct. DJ. Rocky 2, even though it looks like 11. Right. Two. Yeah. <laughs> right, we'll take it. There will be a Rocky 11 eventually, I'm sure. But until there is, that's, we'll take it as two. Uh, question number four, guys. When Rocky finally accepts the fight against Apollo in the original Rocky, it is mentioned during the press conference that Rocky will be paid how much money for the fight? You want the complete total amount? Sure. Not how much he actually gets free and clear, like how much he is said to make. No, I want the after tax amount, guys. The yeah, I can give you that too if you want. <laughs> I can yeah, give you that want, if you want. We want no, to say no, that, that, that 19 percent tax cut for sure needs to be uh put into the totals. Um, five, four, three, two, one. We're gonna start with Pez. Uh, two hundred thousand dollars. That is incorrect, right. DJ. So he gets 150,000, which is actually 37. He gets free and clear uh, after taxes. <laughs> 150,000 is the answer we were looking Damn. for. <laughs> and JT, what did you get, buddy? I thought you said you'd do it for nothing. <laughs> uh -oh. Was that it really 150,000? That yeah. seems like a bad career move to choose uh, that amount. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was about the money. And, and it was a bad career move. Did you see Rocky Five? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Question number five in the category of Rocky. While having their first dinner out, Donnie asked, sorry, this is the category of Creed. While having their first dinner out, Donnie asked Bianca about her hearing loss. She says that she is learning to sign language, but only remembers the bad words. What is the word she shows Donnie how to sign? Holy shit. 
I have no idea. I'm going to take a guess. I was nervous to get a Creed question, but okay. This is feeling good. <laughs> <laughs> if it's uh, any consolation so far, I would have gotten one of these correct. <laughs> one. And yeah, I maybe would have gotten one as well. Five, four, three, two, one. DJ. Uh, it's bullshit. Which that is yeah, oh. it's, uh, that. yeah, I don't remember that. I just said fuck. <laughs> <laughs> bullshit. Use the oh, JT pulling the bullshit. <laughs> Coming back with the bullshit. <laughs> I almost gave it to you when you said holy shit when we asked the question. Like, <laughs> You're not far off. There you go. <laughs> uh, question number six. Which two trainer in the Rocky and Creed franchise have used the same line of women weaken legs? We need both the trainers who have used that line or both characters that have used the line women weaken legs. Now, would you consider this statement misogynistic if you were a female trainer? Yes. I'll err on the side of caution and say yes. <laughs> That's probably the politically correct move, Moose. Excellent. That is the, safest, that is the safest move. Yes. <laughs> Five. You will not get canceled four, after one. Three, two, and one. And DJ, you're going to kick us off. Uh, I said Mickey and Rocky. That's correct. Oh shit. GTE. Mickey and Rocky. Hmm. That is correct. And Pez. I went with the other two that are in the franchise. Duke Evers and Little Duke Evers. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you're keeping it in the family. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Question number seven. In which film will you hear Rocky say, time takes everybody out. Time is undefeated. I got, be I got between two movies. Hmm. Yeah, Same. Yeah, this is very tough. And I remember him saying that. Okay, I'm going to take a oh, shot in the dark here. Three, two, one. JT! I'm going to go with Rocky Balboa? That is incorrect. I also said Rocky Balboa. That still is incorrect. DJ? Damn it, I went with Rocky Balboa as well. I was between the two uh, movies. I know oh. exactly what you're thinking too, JT. The is Russian is cut. Is it? Is it Creed? <laughs> It's, no, it is Creed. It is Creed. Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. I was between Creed and that one, and I was just like, ah. When you said the Russians cut, I thought you were about to say Rocky Farm. I'm like, no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't think that's correct. <laughs> that's a tough one. That's a tough one. That, is, that was a good question. Yeah. Mm. Well, we're going to stick on the train of tough questions. Question number yeah. eight How many of the Rocky Creed films does Sil Sylvester Stallone have writing credits for? Oof. How many? Wait, how many of just the Creed films? No, of both franchises, does he have oh. writing credits for? Also, remember, guys, you can enact a bartender's hint if you should you like. Yeah. And I will help you out. He does not have a writing credit for Creed Three. He definitely doesn't have one for Creed Three. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> Is that <laughs> true? No, that's very true. Two and one. We're going to start with Pez. Uh, I said five of them. That is incorrect. DJ. I just went with all eight. That is also incorrect. Yeah. JTE. I went with all eight also. I can't imagine him not writing on one. I was going to say, one? yeah. Like, it is seven. One? Son of a bitch. He did five? not have a writing credit on Creed. The really? first one. The yeah. first not, even a, not even a story by or anything? Nope. Uh, Creed That's 2, surprising. however, yes. And your final question in round one, ladies and gentlemen. What is the name of Rocky's pet mastiff that appears in Rocky and Rocky 2? Oh, I know this one. If you guys don't know this one, we will probably drop you from yeah. the show now. I would drop myself from the show. Yeah. <laughs> It says a lot when you're stumping us in the first round. This is not looking good for the rest of the yeah. <laughs> You guys might have to lighten up or these are going to be boring matches. <laughs> and 
stupid 50 five, four, three. We all did the same thing, too. Yeah, same thing. One, Pez. Uh, Butkus. That is correct. DJ. Named after a great bear, Butkus. Mm-hmm. Correct. And JTE. Butkus. Butkus. Strong finish to the round. Good job, everybody. Oh, I forget that. At the end of round one, uh, we're currently in a bit of a tight race here. DJ's got the lead with six. JTE's rounding out second with five. And Austin has four points. So they. Round number two. You get to spin our magic bottle to get your round two topic. You only get one spin because life is hard, so deal with it. You'll then get six questions worth two points each. You can go to multiple choice, but that makes them worth one point should you choose to check down to multiple. Your opponent can steal any missed questions. Hostile rules are in effect in round two. You also have your bartender's hints eligible in round two as well. And you can also still double down. So, DJ, you're in the lead. Would you like All to right. spin first, or would you like to defer? Um, I'll I'll defer just to see what happens. Why not? So, JTE, you're in second. You want to spin first? You want to defer? I will defer. All right, Pez, you don't have a choice, my friend. Right. <laughs> Bring up that wheel. All right. Now, if you see the little mugs, those are mystery drinks. If you land on one of those, you'll either get something that helps you or something that really hurts you. Okay. I love it. I love it. Oh, this. wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. All right. So you All tell right. me when to stop. Right, Wait, those... quick question. When you when you say stop, does it come to immediate stop or a slow start? Does it slow down? Yeah. No, it stops. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. That's why I uh, deferred. Okay. I wanted to see what happened. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I'm the guinea pig. All right. Big bucks. No way. Stop. Rocky. Okay. 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 Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, here's the fun part about our game. You don't get to re-spin because life is hard, so deal with it. <laughs> you get Rocky Four. Okay. All <laughs> right. All right. We are starting out with your first question in the category of Rocky Four. At what Las Vegas hotel does Creed versus Ivan Drago take place? I believe it's the MGM Grand. That is correct for two points. Your second question in the category of Rocky IV. What was printed on Rocky's sweatshirt at the Creed versus Drago fight? Mm. And remember, you do have multiple choice in this room. <laughs> Do we steal on this? We yeah. do. Yes. Um, I'll know it when I hear it, so I'll go multiple choice. Damn. All right. <laughs> what was printed on Rocky's sweatshirt at the Creed versus Drago fight? Your options are A, champ, B, USA, C, Creed, D, boss. Uh, boss. That is correct for one point. <laughs> Well Your third question in the category of Rocky IV. During the fight, Drago compares Rocky to what kind of hard surface? He's like a piece of iron. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Great line. <laughs> and your fourth question. Which character in Rocky IV angrily proclaims, this is about us against them? Oh, um... Five, four, three. Ask a bartender. Okay. Mm-hmm. With us as always is our handy dandy bartender, Cousin Ryan. We're going to repeat your question and he's going to jump in and give you the clue. What character angrily proclaimed in Rocky Four, this is about us against them? Oh, I know it now, but shit. All right, go ahead, anyways. <laughs> that damn alligator bit his hand off. Yeah, it's Apollo Creed. I just had to think about it for a second. <laughs> Your fifth question in the category of Rocky Four: In what round does Drago defeat Apollo, causing his death? He beats him in the second round. 
That is correct for two points. He is out here swinging like Rocky. And his final question in Rocky Four: on what day does the Rocky and Drago fight take place in the Soviet Union? It's on Christmas Day. Uh, correct. No seal of it. Well done. <laughs> Excellent job. Right. Also, I like that Cousin Ryan was just casually just cleaning a glass. Just coming in. <laughs> That's right. That's what you do hey, as a bartender. Serving him. <laughs> nothing, nothing but the best from our bartender. That's for sure. It was great. Uh, so, DJ, it comes back to you. Do you want to defer or do you want to spin? Um, let's defer one more time. All right. JTE, you're up. Let's do it. All right. Let the wheel. Right. Come on, wheel. Uh -huh. We'll get itself going. So Rocky Four got taken out. All right, you ready? And stop. What Ooh, round? What round? What round. Ooh. Oh Ooh. damn it! I I said stop when it was like up top. I was thinking I would at least uh -huh. get something on the right side. <laughs> okay, ETE, I'll be asking your questions. Uh huh. First question, in which round did Adonis Johnson and Leo Sperino end in, causing the leak about Adonis being a creed? Uh, say there's multiple choice, right? There is yep. multiple choice. Yeah, but I mean, that. that's, it's, <laughs> it's a number. <laughs> it's like, it's like, did the movie come out in 85 or 86 or 87? Okay. <laughs> um, we, all, we could also give you a bartender's hint if you would like. I know, but like, it's, it's not going to help me. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll go second round. That's correct for two points. <laughs> <laughs> Question number two. In the 15th round of the fight, uh, in Rocky II, both Rocky and Apollo had begun to get excessively fatigued. Near the end of the rounds, uh, Rocky landed several well-placed blows to knock down Apollo. At the same time, Rocky fell down due to exhaustion. Rocky won, but by how many seconds? I mean, he came out at the very last possible, so one second. Like, he came out with one second left. That's correct for two points. <laughs> Okay. One second, Stallion. Beat him by one like, second now. If there's replay, you could even argue yeah, he might not have made it up. <laughs> he might have fallen right back over, okay. honestly. I didn't know what yeah. <laughs> Question number three. Inside of how many rounds did Clubber Lang defeat Rocky in the first fight of Rocky Three, And what round then did Rocky win in their rematch? All right, so he knocked out Rocky in the second round. And Rocky won in the third round in rematch. That's correct for two yeah. points. Nice. 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 Well done. Well played. GT, GT flex in the number brain. <laughs> Question number four. In what round does Rocky eventually knock out Drago in Rocky Four? It's the final round. I'll give that to you. Correct. <laughs> the 13th round. <laughs> the final round, yeah. Question number five. In the original Rocky, though he was an underdog in the fight with Apollo, Rocky somehow managed to knock that Apollo down. In what round did Naki, Rocky knock Apollo down? Huh. I'm going to say second round. That is incorrect. So DJ and Pez, I'm going to ask you guys the question. Looks like you guys are ready to go. Uh, in the original Rocky, although he was an underdog in the fight with Apollo, Rocky somehow managed to knock Apollo down. In what round did Naki, Rocky knock Apollo down, DJ? First round. Correct. Pez. First round. Correct. Two points still for both of you guys. I thought I figured it was first or second, but I thought he went to his corner and then the second round he knocked him out. But <coughs> now I think about it, yeah, it was the very end of the first round. We'll play it. JTE, your final question. Oh, shit, there's that one. Okay. How does the end of the fight with Adonis Creed and Ricky Colan end? So it doesn't end with a knockout. It ends with a decision for Ricky, not Adonis. That's correct. <laughs> and yep. It ends the same way as Rocky won, essentially. Yep. Yep. He yeah. loses by split decision. Yeah, That's exactly. correct. Exactly. Well done. Two points. Damn, I missed that one. Damn. Well, for a category you were not confident in, that was a hell of a performance. That was a hell yeah. of a performance. Yeah. A lot of numbers. Yeah. 
You went to all of them. All right, DJ, you're up. Here we go. You can't defer it anymore, sir. I can't defer to you? You cannot. Well, you can, but (laughs) it doesn't help anyone. Uh, Let's see. There's a big delay on the stop. So yeah, <laughs> I'm trying trying to... I was shooting for Rocky three and I got Rocky four. So plan yeah. accordingly. <laughs> All right. Um, stop. Spin that again. All right. I, I'll take those. <laughs> yeah. Right. Stop. Rocky five. Wow, I said it when it was on Rocky five and it went all the way. <laughs> I told you. Oh, yeah. Well, that makes it random. I'll give you that. So it's you can't make it easy on you guys to do that's, that's that's the awesome. category you want. Six questions and everyone's favorite Rocky movie, number five, DJ. I have a Here. lot of love for Rocky five, so bring it Three on. Repeats. I want one steals. bartender hint, right? What's that? Three repeats and a bartender hint? Yes, you still have them. You also the repeats have, uh, are the bartender's hands. So yes, those are the bartender's hands. Question number one. What diagnosis was Rocky given from doctors after his fight in Russia that officially ended his boxing career? If you don't watch any of the other films. <sighs> Shit, how does he say it, though? I'll take a bartender hint because I'm kind of messed up on the word wording for what you're trying to look for, I think. What diagnosis is Rocky given from doctors that have fit after his fight in Russia that officially ends his boxing career if you don't watch any of the other films? Right. You know, he came up to me and said, me damaged brain? That's impossible. Okay, so it's brain damage. <laughs> I- I was going to say brain damage, but I wasn't sure if you were looking for it. Wait, are we giving the answer in the hints? (laughs) What the heck? You never know. That's not a hint. That's giving you the answer. (laughs) Well, he said it like Yoda, so I mean, I guess that counts. (laughs) What the heck? Hey, you got to use some, man. (laughs) I think we give it to him. It's irreversible brain damage. Yeah. Uh, but we'll give you brain damage, yes. I thought you were like looking for the specific medical term because the doctor does say some weird... I, yeah, it's I like forget. a brain hemorrhage or something. Yeah. yeah, it's like some specific thing, but yeah, mm-hmm. there you go. <laughs> a misdiagnosis. <laughs> it's a concussion. It was a very bad concussion. Well, in, in all fairness, they let him fight again, so apparently it was reversible. So brain gotta, damage. Got to get second opinions when we go doctor, man. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Your yeah, next brain has been like 20 years to heal, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, why hadn't Mickey's boxing gym been torn down since his death? Uh, it was, it was willed to, uh, Rocky's son. Correct. For two points. Good pull, DJ. Good pull. Hell yeah. Your third question. What is the name of the young fighter from Oklahoma who wanted to have Rocky manage him? Tommy, the machine gun. <laughs> Correct for two points. These are the softest. <laughs> <All right. laughs> hey, hey. Who's Tommy Gunn? <laughs> okay. Please continue. After, after George W. Duke took over Rocky's pupil's career, he gave him something Rocky never did, a title shot. What was the outcome or how did that bout end? Uh Tommy Gunn won the title. Uh, we are looking more specific. More specific than winning the title? Yes. Um, in what round did he win the title? Oh, in what round did... T- okay, there we go. That's okay. Um, yeah, what rounds ain't so easy, are they? <laughs> <done. laughs> Five. Uh, let's, let's get another bartender hint. He's gonna, he's just gonna give a number. I can't wait to hear this. Hit. After George W. Duke took over Rocky's pupil's career, he gave him something Rocky never did—a shot at the title. What was the outcome of that bout? He was off to a promising start. Mm, okay, that's better. 
<laughs> JP is playing under protest from here on out. Noted. It's better than giving him a number. <laughs> Five. Four. Oh, so round one. Correct. For oh, okay. I was like trying to decipher the clue. I'm like, wait a second. Is it not a promising one? start early? Yeah. At, at least he didn't say it was the first round. He could have been the first or second, maybe. Knockout in round Some one. Some might say he might be number one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Your fifth question. What event causes Rocky to challenge Tommy to a street fight on the spot? What event? It's him. It's Tommy pushing Paulie, then Paul, then... Rocky's Correct. Saying, you want Correct. to fight me? No. My ring's outside. No, 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 challenge. no challenge. challenge. He punches no, Paulie he, he in the mouth. Paulie. He definitely punches Paulie. And Paulie does him. this. He's like, yeah, he puts he's looking blood. for blood. He goes, you should have left him on the side of the street where you found him. There was no push. There was a punch. All okay. right. We have two challenges in the event of a challenged question. We will defer to the wisdom of our bartender. So we're going to bring in Cousin Ryan to settle this dispute. I still stand by my first part. <laughs> like any good bar fight, it started with a punch. Man. I gotta agree with them. It was a punch. Oh. Mm-hmm. So, so, a push. Paulie so pushes case, Tommy. If you remember, Paulie pushes right, Tommy. That's right, yeah. He pushes them. He's like, yeah, you're trash. He's like, you're garbage. You were nothing without Rocky. I got messed and up from the whole having to explain things. Yeah. Also, I guess that implies that JTE and Pez knew the answer, so they both get a two point. I wrote it down, goddammit. Point gun punches. <laughs> I acted out the scene for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And your final question in the category of Rocky Five Complete this quote from Rocky. Come on, you know, Mickey used to say a fight ain't over till you uh, hear the bell. That is correct. I didn't hear, hey, Tommy, I didn't hear I no, didn't bell. no bell. <laughs> you want more? <laughs> One more round. <laughs>
go third. All, All right. right. That's all good. Yeah, I'll take the one in the middle. Okay. Hit the one in the middle. So JT goes one, I'll two, take the three. First one. All right. Here we go. Uh, ben, you want to lead off with JTE's six pack? Absolutely. So JT. six questions. <laughs> six questions, correct? And I still use my double down. You, you can still and use I, your double down. You and still have, have three a hits. And everybody still has a loose hole. That's yes, right, the hustle rule, rule, correct. The hustle, hustle. Now, what we will do is we will give the uh, the category, and then DJ and Pez, if you guys wanted at any point to choose the hustle, you would then, after we list the category, elect to do the hustle. We're going to give the category and the point value for it. Can you remind me again what the hustle is? You're betting on your opponent not getting the question correct. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, and if – okay. If they get it wrong, then do we get the points? Yes. All right. And I got three hints left. And DJ, how many hints do you have left? Zero? I got one, one left, one. I think. And Austin yeah. has one or two left? I have two. Okay, got it. All right, let's rock. All right. JTE, your first question in the category of Dolph Lundgren movies, and it is yes. your one-pointer. Your one-pointer Dolph Lundgren movie questions. Copy that. What other action franchise features both Dolph Lundgren and Sylvester Stallone? That'd be The Expendables. Correct for one point. And sticking with JTE, your next question is your five pointer in the category of Sylvester Stallone films. This is your five pointer. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone peer, appeared in an adult movie in the 1970s called what? <sighs> okay. Oh, this is tough because there's... <laughs> <laughs> Quick question. Yes. I'll also, what's the top? There's a six-pointer also I'm going to get later? Yes. Yeah. All right. So there's two answers to this. Uh, it was retitled the Italian Stallion after he became known as Sylvester Stallone. Before that, it was like Party Time at Kitties or something like that. Something, But are you going to take Italian Stallion? Because that's what it was rebranded as when it was known to the public. I, I will take the re-release title. We were okay. looking for Party at Kitty and Stud's house. But Kitty it and Stud's. Okay. <laughs> but, but he is correct about yeah. the re-release. <laughs> It was re-released as Italian Stallion. That's how I most can't people found it. Yeah. <laughs> of course we did. Yeah. Of course we did. Dude, we had an, early we had an answer that was bullshit. So of course yeah. we had an answer. Of course. Yeah, big five point get for JCE on that one. Oh, yeah. Very nice. All but right, he's now, in the lead. All right. So I will. Um, we're going to stick with JTE here. And with Ro the next category is Rockies in film, and this is your four pointer. Rockies in film for your four pointer. The Real Rocky is a documentary about what real life boxer who fought Muhammad Ali? That'd be Chuck Webner. That is correct for four points. <laughs> wow. Uh -huh. Big freaking get. And your next question, JT, in the category of American history for six points. Oh, your six points are in the category of American history. <laughs> Should I just go ahead and say hustle or just wait till he gets the question? <laughs> you have to do it before he gets the question. I would yeah. say hustle for this. Hustle. Okay. All right. So now if JT gets it, then he just loses he his hot hole, right? He doesn't Pez, lose, Pez so doesn't lose points. I will lose the points. JT will get double the points. Yes. Oh, yes. oh JT gets bringing. double. So mm -hmm. if JT... Mm -hmm. Moose, yeah, you had broken exactly up. It. Can you repeat that? Yeah, that's sorry. Uh, that is exactly it. So if you're going to hot hole him and he gets this correct, Pez, you will lose six points and JT will get 12. Mm -hmm. However, if JT doesn't get it, you get those six points. Mm -hmm. Now, if I happen to also say hustle, there's potential for him to get 24 points. Is that what you're correct. saying? Correct. This is correct. Oh, oh, that's, correct. Wow. <laughs> that's correct. That's the beauty of the hustle. Uh, you know oh, what? Damn. I hate to sway you, but American history was my favorite subject in high school. <laughs> All right. So we... That's too much of a point swing. Okay. Damn. I'm not going to go you. for it. All right. So the category of American history now for 12 points. 
The Liberty Bell was cast by two local metal workers in Philadelphia. Who were they? We will accept you, last names only. Are you kidding me? Oh, I have so to know good. who created the Liberty Bell? This is correct. I, I'll use my hint, please. <laughs> He's going to say the name. The Liberty Bell in Philadelphia was cast by two local metal workers in Philadelphia. Who were they? Last names are acceptable. National Treasure had a great hint about this. It led them to the House of. Yeah. Um, Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> Noted iron worker Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> and Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> yeah, the two incorrect. greatest people in American history. Nice, nice I, I, I mean, I have not a single clue. <laughs> the House of Pass and Stowe. So. The House of Pass and Stowe. Son of a gun. I thought they were names. I thought I was looking for people. That, that, oh, those are names. Those are names. Those are names. <laughs> Pass Wait, what's your name? Stowe. It sounds it's like a baby. John Pass, it's John Pass and John Stowe. Uh, and in National oh, wow. Treasure, the the National Treasure, the hints lead them to the house of Pass and Stowe. Just my luck. The, the one six pointer has yeah. nothing to do with movies. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally like, I'm saving for that six pointer. And then I get an American history. By yes. I should have hosted them. Yeah, you should have hosted. Big. I think no, I'm officially out now, on right? One. No, because uh, you can still hassle them. Okay. And you still have a three pointer and a two pointer left as Got well. It. Got it. And you have not used your double down. Got it. Okay. Copy. All right. Your next question. And for your three point question in the category of music, three pointer in the category of music, Paul McCartney scored the top hit of the year Rocky was released, 1976, with Silly Love Songs. What band was he fronting at the time? Paul McCartney? Mm -hmm. I'll use one of my hints. <laughs> Paul McCartney scored the top hit of the year that Rocky was released, 1976, with Silly Love Songs. What band was he fronting at the time? It's also the name of a wrong, long-running sitcom, airport sitcom. Oh, yeah. Wings. <laughs> Correct. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. And your final question for two points in the category of boxing. Under it, it, it does behoove you to double down. Yeah, on this one. I know. I I wasn't against last time because I wasn't sure. Uh, quick point of thing: can, when you double down, do you have to hear the can you hear the question first, or do you have to double down on the category? You double yeah. down on the category. Yeah, the I'll category. Okay. double down because I have to. <laughs> uh, uh, now worth four points in the category of boxing. Under what name did Muhammad Ali win his gold medal at the 1960 Summer Olympics? Cassius Clay. Correct for four points. Nice. <laughs> that went so wrong. <laughs> uh, I should have used I, that I, double I, down earlier. I didn't think American history would be the six. Uh, hey, man, you got all of your questions except the six pointers. So yeah. that was still a good uh, good six pack for you. And remember, well, you, you can still hustle. I'm going to hustle somebody. <laughs> so, DJ, uh, because Pez en enables yeah. the hustle, you're now in last place. So I'm going to be giving you your six pack. I don't okay. even know what the scores are now. Jesus, how do you keep up with this, guys? I have no idea. It's a lot of math. <laughs> yeah. There it is. So JT right, yeah. is okay. settled at 34. You still have your hoss hole. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Pez, with that six-point hoss hole steal, you're at 25. And DJ, you're at 19. So you're going to get your six pack now, DJ. Okay. Your first question is in the category of pop culture. This is your three-point question. Okay. In 2007, Sylvester Stallone was arrested in what country for bringing in banned hormones and steroids? I remember this. <laughs> um, Would you like to use your bartender's clue? I only have one left, right? That's correct. Yeah, I don't know if I want to burn it now. Five, four, um, three, two, is Russia. That is incorrect. The answer is Australia. 
Oh, son of a bitch. Uh, your next category is soundtracks, and this is okay. your four-point question. What Stallone family member had songs on the Rocky and Ro- uh, Rambo 2 soundtracks? God, I hope it's Frank Stallone. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. <laughs> like, he doesn't have like any other, Would right? Would you care to ask Tom Dagnino? Yeah. <laughs> is that an option? <laughs> Your next category is American history for six points. Mass hole. Oh Jesus! Right. No JPE is enabling the hospital. If it's as hard as, did you know my answer? I, I did from that because of the National Treasure movie. I've oh, watched that God, too okay. many times. Right. I'm still gonna take. I'm taking the shot here. Okay, JT is gonna try to hosshole you. Uh, it's better the not question be. Is, found America. During which U.S. war was the character of Uncle Sam first referenced? In what U.S. war? During which U.S. war was the character of Uncle Sam first referenced? Um, well, it's between a couple. <laughs> Four. Would you um, like to use your bartender's hint? Look, three. This is your six-point question. Yeah, two. let's go with the bartender hint. Okay. <laughs> So I'm going to give you the question, and then our our handy-dandy bartender cousin Ryan will come in and give you a hint. Okay. During which U.S. war was the character of Uncle Sam first referenced? The British are coming again, but at least we got the treaty again. Five, four. World War One. That is incorrect. It is the War of eighteen twelve? Yeah. Let's go. Give me those points with a big six point hot hole. <laughs> Woo. Woo. Damn. Okay. All right, DJ. Your next question is in the category of sports, this and it's five points. Let's, let's, let's just let's just go with a double down. Just I I gotta try and make okay. up points here. We're gonna double down. What famous Eagles head coach started his career in 1976, later leading them to a Super Bowl? Oh, shit. Um, uh, I know this one. <laughs> <laughs> this is tough, though. <laughs> it, uh, 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 fucking, what's his name? In, 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 uh, or... <laughs> Greg Kinnear. <laughs> yeah, it's Greg Kinnear, he plays... <laughs> Dick Vermeil. That's correct. Yeah, for ten nice. points. Thank you for the thank you for saying Greg Kinnear, JT. Wait, did that help you? You said you knew it the movie. You I knew the movie. I, could, I was like, it got me to the rabbit hole of like. Oh my god! I thought you already knew the movie. I was like, you must know the actor. Greg Kinnear's a dick, so you know. <laughs> that was your bartender's hint for. Hell yeah! Okay. <laughs> Damn. Jesus, okay. Wow. Big ten point get. JT just giving it to you. Mm-hmm. I guess he uh, felt bad about stealing those six from you. Uh, okay. Oh man. Next. That was his game. double down. Just so the scorekeepers know, he had doubled down that question. Uh, next question is your one point question, and it's famous Italians. Okay. Christopher Columbus was Italian, but what country funded his trip to the New World? Uh, Spain. That's correct for a point. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, and your last question is in the category of Michael B. Jordan. Okay. What was the first film collaboration between Michael B. Jordan and Ryan Coogler? Fruitville Station. Correct for two points. Oof. Okay. Finish strong. You finish strong. All right, oh, Pez. Your about moment that of judgment is here. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Because um, it all fails. He's where I let down all the fans. <laughs> so, let's see. I'm down four. Yeah. You're down I mean, four. You still okay. have a hustle. Just got to hope he doesn't hit it. All right. So I, have to hit, I have to do a hustle on a four, five, or six then, right? Just yep. to have a shot? Yeah. Okay. All right. As your first category is Michael B. Jordan for two points. A two-pointer in the category of Michael B. 
Jordan. Okay. What was the American name of Michael B. Jordan's character Killmonger in Black Panther? Only watched that movie once. <laughs> uh, I don't know. No answer. All right. The answer was Eric Stevens. Eric Stevens. Your next category in the category of boxing. And for five points, boxing for five points. Um, um, do I want to, what are the other categories he's got left? He has uh, boxing, American history, action movies, my Stallone movie, and sports. Uh, five that, points, you said, for boxing. That history and boxing. <laughs> Let's. Uh... No one's hit a history one yet. I don't know. It's tough. All but right. It may not be a, a six pointer because that's the only one left, right? No, it could if, be a six pointer, yeah. It might or might not be. It might be a one pointer. No, that's true. I All don't right. know. It's been six pointer every time so far. Right. <laughs> it's tough to say, man. Damn. All um, right. You got three seconds, and then I'm reading the question. Yep. One, two, three. It, let's go. Hustle. Come on, Austin. Come on, Austin. Get this boxing question. (laughs) All right. In the category (laughs) of boxing, Mark Wahlberg plays what real boxer in The Fighter? Come on, man. Tell Uh, tell me you're going to miss this one. Can I go look at my DVD really quick over there? (laughs) No. (laughs) Come on. You got to know. DT, you say nothing. God, yeah. I, I, I you gave you Dave Greg Wall. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna use. Uh, I'm gonna ask a bartender, please. <clears throat> Mark Wahlberg plays what real life boxer in The Fighter? The bartender's clue. He wasn't Rocky's trainer. Thank you. Oh, um, yeah, it's fucking Mickey something. <laughs> um, Five, four, three. Come on, Austin. Two. Uh, Mickey uh, Canelo. Oh. Oh. Mickey, Mickey, Mickey Ward, Ward baby. Mickey Ward. The fight of the century. The three, uh, the greatest trilogy of boxing. I'm not a boxing fan. That's why he hassled me. Yeah. <laughs> DJ Thank with you. a five point still, huge five yeah. point still that gives him the lead. Yeah, I'm uh, out. Never know. This game never know. Turns. All right. Your next question in the category of American history. For how many points? Six points. Six points. I need to catch up because of that, so I'm going to double down on this. Oh, shit. Okay. It's a shame you are not a boxing fan. (laughs) But it is now your 12 point question. What was the first African American to win the heavyweight boxing championship? Got two boxing questions. <laughs> yeah. Um, you have one bartender's hint left. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and use it. Yeah. I'm going to use that one. <laughs> what was the first? African American to win the heavyweight boxing championship. I think I know this. <laughs> He's upside down eating banana pancakes, but also a musician with some shitty music. What? <laughs> yeah. Can we read that slower? slower. He's upside oh. down and eating banana pancakes. But he's also a musician with some shitty music. I like his music. <laughs> I do too. I do too. <laughs> If it's what I think, I'm pretty sure I know this now. <laughs> Seven, six, five. Sugar Ray Leonard. <laughs> and with that, ladies and gentlemen, your losers are JT and Austin Pez Hour. Lost by one point. DJ taking the big win with 41 points on a Hoss Hole Steel. Well done, guys. Well freaking done. 
Yeah. You know, I, I, I feel like I lost the match because I was waiting for the double down on my six. Oh. And then I got to the six and it was American history. <laughs> and then by that point, I had already answered my four and my five. I was really, I, my thought process was as long as it's something movie related, I'll hit that six. But once That's I heard good. history, I was screwed. Oh, yeah. And then I then I only had like like two or three left. <laughs> so I was like, God damn it, I could have used that four or five. Nice. Did you guys doing the... have a good time? Yeah, yeah it was great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Good. The only good. question I'm mad at guys, about. thank you so so much for being on our show. Uh it, it really is quite humbling to be able to have people of your stature to come on and, and play in oh. a match. And me. And I got you. <laughs> and of course, what I would also what I'm, I'm asking all of our contestants that come on our show, is there someone you would like to challenge? And in what category, movie or movies, would you like to challenge them in? Oh, man. It can be anyone. We'll get them and we'll write you a match. Um... I've already done this. I can reveal it. Reveal it. Oh. I have already challenged Moose Haas to a Back to the Future match. Oh wow! Let's go! Let's go! So that will happen. All right, that's on the. All right, I'll throw. I'll throw this out. I'll challenge whoever because I don't know who may be as big a fan, but I'll challenge somebody to like Ocean's Eleven or Ocean's Thirteen. Ooh, one of those okay. two, not the middle one. <laughs> oh, uh, it'll be the franchise, you son of a bitch. No, no, no. It's gonna be the franchise, and we'll include Ocean's Eight. Yeah. Finally, get the yeah. JTE versus Loma spelling counts match. Yeah. <laughs> I have to look at my Blu-rays. You just go for a spelling B. <laughs> Is there a Captain Ron match against anybody? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Captain Ron, that's <laughs> Or maybe just a Kurt Russell thing. Yeah, uh, like uh, on a side note, like um, you know what, Roadhouse. 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 <laughs> Give okay. me a Roadhouse challenge. Was I that don't care who it is. Roadhouse two with Jake Busey. <laughs> no, only the first. <laughs> only, only the Swayze <laughs> films. Got it. Okay. All right. if, if I could specify, then I'll say Ocean's Thirteen. Okay. As a specific one. Mm -hmm. So if you okay. find somebody that's interested in that. Okay. That's right. my favorite of the oceans. So Woo, good match, guys. This is uh, tough. Yeah, this is close great one. job, guys. Right. Uh, that Give was us a lot one of second. Fun. Yeah. Uh, we'll go around and have everyone a chance to plug whatever they want to plug. Yeah. Yeah, you could just catch me on Twitter at JTE Movie Thinks. Everything I do is ends up right there. Oh, and Bite Size Media. I'm now writing for Bite Size Media. There are a lot of great writers over there. We all kind of do group reviews. And yeah, check out the website and check us out on Twitter. We have Bite Size uh, Breakdown as part of our Drunk Trivia Tournament. So you'll be yeah. playing on that oh, team too. Great. Let's do it. Austin, uh, you were yeah. the second loser. So yeah, what would you like to plug? Awesome. Sounds good. <laughs> Once again, I'd like to reiterate, I don't think I lost on my lack of Rocky knowledge. I just want to reiterate that. <laughs> I know my Absolutely. fictional boxing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, over on the Movie Hero Network, you can just search Movie Hero Network on YouTube. Myself and Jordan Anderson, we do uh, tournament fights, two ranker fights, podcast league now, uh, sh many shows, which uh, Moose Haas has appeared on many of them. Uh, JT has appeared on uh, two ranker fights a couple of times. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Cousin Ryan's been on a couple of tournaments. Benny's been on some of our tournaments and tier rankers uh so you can go find us all over there uh at the shimoto on friends and family group which we still run over on facebook we kind of post it's like a little community where we post all of our shows and everything and uh tmg Enter entertainment hosts movie battleground which is a movie debate league uh which i'm a big part of so you can uh, check that out as well Thank and you. to close this out the winner the rocky universal world champion uh -huh. the ultimate survivor david jadoyan what would you like to plug um uh you could, I mean, I don't really have much to plug. I could just say you could maybe follow me on Twitter if you want. I don't really post um, at DJ and Doyen. Uh, I'd say just follow follow these guys and follow their shows. Follow my friends, Film on Tap. They got a great, cool podcast. Uh, just, it's about it. Just follow all these awesome people. Like, they all do amazing things, and it's a lot of fun. Thanks for having me, man. This was a blast. And like you said, this was the Rocky part was the, like, we didn't lose on the Rocky no, part. No, we didn't part. lose on that. <laughs> We're good. I don't think anyone's did. <laughs> No, it was great to to get to like flex the Rocky knowledge. Uh, it's a long time coming. I've been dying, like Benny knows, I've been dying for a Rocky match for a long time. Well, well and you done, did not this point, man. You walked out as the champion. Amen. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we hope we saved America's educational system a little bit today. Moose, any final thoughts? 
No, this was great. You guys' Rocky knowledge is on par. Uh, I'm still still getting the goosebumps from JTE getting uh, getting flustered at the rounds and then nailing almost every <laughs> one of them. So I mean, that and was that, a sweet. That, that was big a big steal yeah. from both of them on mine to make you Pez tie yeah. the game. A lot of uh, back and forth. It was crazy. Yeah. Tons of back and forth. We love this because we don't like mathematical elimination. So yeah. hey, you can still be Just high. Chaos. Choose a hot hole and get the lead. It was great. Great match, guys. Thank you guys so much for being part of this. We love you guys. On behalf of myself, on behalf of Benny, and on behalf of our bartender cousin Ryan, thank you, JTE, Pez, and DJ for being on. Yo, Adrian, we did it. Uh -huh.